Yeah, I can still pull it back. In the old heart. Well, welcome back to another week of Midwest Whitetail. It is Saturday, July 27th, and it's a beautiful day here in Iowa. We've got rain in the forecast in the next few days, and today we're gonna head down to the River Bottom Farm and get the Rut Greens fall food plots in. Been getting out to the farm every day after work these last few weeks. Whether I'm doing brush clearing with the skid loader, spraying plots, mowing stuff, been just busy, hard at work, getting everything ready to go. Just starting to get uh, some cameras redeployed since the flood. Actually, Rye helped me out a few days ago on the River Bottom Farm, putting some back out. Today, we're gonna to talk a little bit about our strategy for going after moss. I'm not 100% sure it's a buck I'm gonna hunt this year. Haven't found him back yet, but in my head, I was saying that last year. I mean, he was a big four-year-old. We followed him since he was three, and I'm expecting him to be one of the primary targets this year. So we're gonna take you guys through the strategy early, mid, and late season for potentially hunting moss this year. While we're getting loaded up and heading down to the river bottom farm, we're gonna jump over to Rye. And uh, Rye has a new permission farm this year, and it's one that, that I used to hunt. Uh, I used to exchange work for hunting rights. Um, great farm, had a lot of fun out there over the years. I killed a big uh, seven pointer there late season with the bow back in 2015. My wife shot a good 10. Mr. Clean back in 2017 when she was pregnant with the boys. It's been a lot of time, a lot of history out there and then eventually got busy enough that I didn't have time to help the landowner or much time to dedicate to hunting out there. Earlier in the year, the landowner reached back out to me and, and he's a friend of mine to come take a look at the farm and look at the food plots and try to help him figure out a strategy to how he can make things better. And, and I started talking to him about potentially having Rye help him in exchange for hunting rights. And so he and Rye met and, and Rye's uh, starting that process, which I'm excited to see what shows up on those farms this year. We just got out to the new farm. As you guys heard Mike say, this is a farm that, um, I don't think he hunted this specific farm, uh, but the landowner, Mike used to do food plots and stuff for in exchange hunting some on his farm. And Mike kind of hooked me and him up and that's gonna be our goal moving forward. This year, not looking at doing a ton, but we're gonna get the food plots ready for him, get a cutty link system out, maybe do some scrape posts or some little stuff. As of right now, we are pretty much about to make our first steps on this farm. This farm's about 95 acres. It sits along the river and it's kind of unique. You've got areas that you can hunt the south and north side of the river. So I think it's gonna hunt a little bit bigger than a typical 90 acre property would. You're gonna get movement on both sides. So main goal of the day, get some cuttybacks out, identify some spots we wanna put some tree stands. And another thing is to figure out if I can get some food on this property. Um, last year I used the overcast in a big cornfield and turned out to be a huge success. Had a ton of encounters out of that tree with that little green plot there. So that's something I'm gonna utilize. Maybe there's an area we can spray and put in a rock greens pot, but uh, I have two areas marked on Onyx and a couple of other areas that I kind of just looked at on the aerial that I'm interested in. So looks like there's a couple good pinch points. Uh, we're gonna go around kind of speed scout the property, learn as much as we can today, and uh, hopefully find a giant here before uh, October 1st. Oh, I have too many cameras in here. <laughs> I think I'm gonna put a camera here. I think having one on this edge is a pretty good idea. And since I can't get to the north side today, I've got a couple extras, so. Bring bug spray when scouting river bottom properties in the summer. Today is July 18th. Camera one on the board. Zero zero one trail camera. We are going to make trail cameras blue. Oh, there we go. So 
this spot, you can see where I left my mark up on the top side. It pinches down a little bit more up there, but really the whole little strip is no wider than 60 yards. So I gotta find a tree somewhere on that edge. Just, we were walking over here to the edge and on the scrape from last year. It looks like it's pretty, pretty open, so 18, 19, well, what do you think, 18 or 19? I'm going 18. 18, he was right. When the corn comes out, the spot's gonna be dynamite, dude. When the corn's up, they're not quite as susceptible to being pinched down along the river like that, but when it's out, I think it should be a sweet spot. Not that it won't be good otherwise. So I think I'm gonna mark this tree real quick as an option to come over and hunt here. Look at that thing, just hammered down at me. But um, I still wanna look and see if there's an option that we could possibly swing for a north wind at the head of it. But I do like this tree, all the crossings that come across in this little pinch. So it looks like it's probably 50 yards wide here. So you have a pretty good chance. The other thing that I like about this, you can see really well across the creek. Even with the grass right there, once you look through it, the timber's kind of open. So anything that's across the creek, and that's, I have permission on that side. That's still part of the same farm. You can possibly call them across. So obviously calling them across water is always questionable, but you gotta try, right? Could do a food plot here. Oh yeah. Let's walk out here. You almost make like a little funnel here if you ran the turnips up from that through here. If the deer are coming down this strip, they filter right through here. And that oak tree right there would be set up pretty good. It's a pretty big oak, but um, it'd just be like a little filter into the plot. You had green running up from there into here. But I do like this oak for a stand. And that would be your north wind setup. You just give up everything behind you. It's the neighbor's field. So have the north wind set up on the pinch here. I mean, it's maybe 35 yards to the edge. And then we have the other stand opportunity to hunt it a little farther on the south or west or really whatever we wanted to except the north. So. It's such an interesting little spot. Like you've got a ditch comes down from this side, ditch comes down from the head of the field, ditch comes down from this way, and then one, two, three inside corners of the field. Like, I don't know, I like it. It's just, you've got a lot of things that funnel deer movement right here, right? I'm not putting a camera here today. I wanna put the home camera at the head of this, and then we'll come back and put a camera here when we're here next time. But this spot's pretty sweet. Dude. All this wind damage. Regardless, this is exactly what I did that overcast blend in last time. And I just talked about how cool that spot was. The three inside corners, three ditches coming together. Add a little green pot here and I bet you, I mean, it's gonna be over a quarter of an acre if you stretched it the whole way. You don't necessarily have to hunt the green plot, you still hunt the movement, but I mean, it could be a sweet little spot and make it better. And we've said it a couple times this year, but that overcast blend for me last year specifically was a huge game changer. I mean, I had a ton of great hunts out of that stand. I mean, as you can tell, we have 700 mosquitoes around us, so we're trying to get the last camera set and then we're gonna hop out of here. I didn't bring bug spray and we can't get to the other side of the farm. This is the last little patch of timber I wanted to look at, but I mean, finding that spot, 
the rest of it is just single ditches. I mean, that's the confluence of it all. So that's where I want to be. I'm pretty darn excited. I can't wait to get to the other side of the farm. Really, really excited for those two spots on the west side of the property. Possibly putting a food plot there. I don't know if I'll get it in this year. We're definitely gonna get that overcast in on the small plot where those three ditches come through and the three inside corners of the field. But the pinch going into that little peninsula and then that little alleyway where the food plot eventually will be. I think those are gonna be some sweet spots. Really, the farm lays out fantastic. I thought the farm looked good on Onyx, but when I got here, I mean, that was, it lays out pretty sweet. So, and the access isn't as bad as I thought it was gonna be. You know, it sucks you're gonna to have to walk through these first sections of timber if you wanna access the west side, but that's the only place you can get to without being on somebody else's property. So, I'm excited to look at the north side of the farm across the creek. Hopefully gonna do that this weekend. But for now, I'm still pretty content with what we've got going on. So, next step, food plots and uh, getting stands hung. So we got four cameras out and hopefully a big one shows up soon. Hopefully you guys enjoyed that segment with Rye. I'm really looking forward to seeing what shows up on that property for him. We've been out here a couple hours now. We got the fertilizer down on all the plots and we just started drilling the seed into the ground. We got rut greens and I added a little bit of the multi-year clover mix. Um, just a small percentage of the overall seed mixture has that extra clover in it. That way in the spring, we'll get a good clover stand here. And I usually come and top it a little bit in the, uh, with some frost seeding as well. Try to maintain these plots as best I can throughout the spring and summer with a good food source. This area is the uh, area that I feel like I'm most likely to catch up with moss in the early season. And over the years, slowly been modulating how I hunt this farm in the early season. But this portion of the farm is really great. We got a lot of destination ag north of here, off of the property, a lot of beans and the deer filter out of the bedding and usually this functions as sort of a staging area prior to them moving off in the night to feed in the big ag fields. And having a lush brassica plot with clover here, it's just a great area that feels safe and um, it works really well. We had some really great hunts here last year. We actually saw moss out of that blind last year cutting through the park. It wasn't something we ended up getting footage of, but he hangs out in this area early, at least he did last year and the year before that. So. My strategy is gonna to be to try to target them here on the north end of the farm. Another distinct advantage of this area is it's basically on the edge of the farm, so we're not having to tromp all the way through the farm to get to it. And I think early it's good to be somewhat conservative. Um, you guys wanna see a full breakdown on this particular spot, entry, exit, and just how I generally hunt it. Rye will put up a link to a previous uh, stand site breakdown for this food plot. I do have a few other green food plots that we'll put on this property. And depending on where moss is showing up and where he's most active, we'll have the ability to bounce around and be flexible. In general for early season, you know, I'm focused on afternoon hunts, green food sources, and then those cool fronts can really get them on their feet before dark. But well, we're gonna get moving to the next spot. On the way, we're gonna stop and uh, check out a couple spots where I think might have a good chance of catching up with moss uh, mid-season.
A lot of times the deer, that, that trail that we popped in on, you know, they walk right up there. So we can see them coming from the stand. We haven't had water like this in the slough in years. Ought to make it interesting. Should make the spot even better. Which spot's that? The pinch. <laughs> the old pinch. So I shot Dak. I shot Dak right there at six yards. And DK was on the other side of the V tree at 20 yards. And Prodigy was at 17. A good little spot. Why don't you introduce us to who you're talking to, Mike? Evan, our newest intern. How you guys doing? Yeah. And who we got over there? What do, Dave. What do you go by over there, Duke? <laughs> Mr. Dave. Mr. Dave. <laughs> call me Mr. And then Gronk, uh, we call that the Gronk grass because the morning I shot him, it was a southeast wind. And we just did a hanging hunt kind of on that corner bone. I went back over the river and he came up the river through the grass patch there. But yeah. And where was Moss standing last year? Moss ran in circles around this tree, <laughs> actually. I mean, between the couple of encounters, but he came all around us, went down into the slough, came up behind us, was licking our vegetation we walked on, was trying to figure out, man, what? What deodorant these guys wearing? This is nice. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, the spot we call head of the slough, you just walk up the slough and it's probably about 200 yards where the slough dies out into the timber. And uh, that's, a, that's a great spot too. And we had moss under us right there last year, early season as well. I think you can have good hunts here at any time, right? Yeah, I, I mean, the, the hunts are shorter earlier in the year in the morning, but they come back. I mean, they're coming to bed in the peninsula. You know, last year with the mass crop, it was really good. I mean, that just made it where they just wanted to hang out right here. But, you know, earlier in the year, you don't get constant activity, but that first hour of the day, they just all come pouring back through. And uh, Joey B, Moss, all those. It's hard for me to think of a better spot for late October and November out of all the properties I've ever hunted, all the places I've ever hunted, as far as just the way it sets up, where they bed, where they feed, all the destination, the cruising setup here, the way it pinches them down. I mean, for archery, it's just really good. And this year, we actually have water in the slough, and so we've had tons of rain. The whole farm went underwater. It keeps, the river keeps rising. We haven't flooded again, but this slough takes on water every time the river comes up. And if that happens throughout the deer season, it funnels them down right here even better. It's best in the morning with the thermals rising with little to no wind. But if I've got a little bit of wind, I'd prefer it to be a west wind, just blowing straight out over the wetland. And this setup is super high. Helps us keep out of the line of sight of deer. It helps um, our scent, you know, blow over them, so to speak. I mean, we just rarely get picked off right here. And we have deer on all sides of us. And we filmed moss out of this spot twice, October 21st, 22nd, and then October 29th. And then at the head of the slough, a couple hundred yards down, it's one of my other favorite spots on the farm for that time of year. We had them come by October 25th. So that late October time frame is my absolute favorite time of year, that pre-rut time. You know, those bucks are starting to get excited. They're searching for the first available does. They're starting to cover more ground. They're callable. It's a great time of year. Bucks are still, generally speaking, sticking close to the area they know, so they're not off, you know, running around chasing does. So it's my favorite time of year. And uh, to me, it's the time to jump into, you know, a lot of those funnel and classic rut spots. And so the pinch obviously is one of those. And then afternoons, I still hunt afternoons um, right here, but often back up onto food sources in the afternoon that time of year. And, try to get them, um, get, hunt where the does are, you know, you hear that phrase. 
whatever plots of does seem to be hitting the most and then hoping that those bucks will come and check those first in the afternoon. This area also gets a lot of traffic during late season and I historically have hunted the pinch in late season but it ends up being difficult. Um, deer, one, we lose all our leaf cover and we don't have a lot of great uh, trees right here that hold on to leaves. Being high helps but you still end up getting picked off. Over the last couple of years we've moved out to this uh, bean plot. We call it the, the south bean plot. It's where I shot Kelsey. If we don't get moss before late season, that's where we're gonna be targeting him and we're gonna move out there next. I've modified that area. My goal with that is to, you know, get him in the bow range, right? It's a big plot and so um, it's harder to bow hunt it. It's made for gun hunting really. I started over the years making modifications to allow us to bow hunt and cross bow hunt it and I think this will be the finishing touch just to be able to be more successful with the bow in hand. So uh, let's go check it out. So this is that spot I was just talking about, a spot I'm actually really excited about. I've, over the last few years, I've been trying to figure out how to make this spot better for late season hunting. And this area that I'm standing in is just a low spot. It's, it's wet, it's extra wet this year with all the rain, but normally the low spots on this farm do really, really well with brassicas. And so we came in, mowed it off, sprayed it, and converted some of the spots where the beans don't grow because it's wet into this rut green spot. And the redneck blind you see over me is where little Tate shot daggers. And uh, that was my first attempt at setting this area up for bow hunting late season. And it worked the crossbow 40 yards with Tate. I think with that we can make it work again this year, bow hunting for moss late season. I put a few turnips right in front of the Kelsey blind that's on the dike, a little portion of the road there and a little wet spot, and then this area. And then I ran the drill to connect the two. So there's a little runway There'll be beans on both sides on the higher ground and then the brassicas in the middle. It should work pretty well. I'm excited to see how it does. And obviously we have a few other spots on the farm as well, but this is where I feel like we're most likely to catch up with moss. And we did film here actually late season last year. So hopefully moss shows up on camera soon. We've got a handful of cameras out on this farm, still quite a few to put out since I pulled them all during the flood. Uh, it has not been my priority lately, but hopefully over these next couple weeks, I'll keep deploying cameras and. It's exciting to slowly start getting some of the bucks from last year showing back up. Just excited to see how it all unfolds here in the coming months. Thank you guys for joining us and we'll see you back next week.